everybody, and welcome to episode 62 of the This Old Knit podcast. I am your host, Nina, otherwise known as Ine, on Ravelry, Instagram, and Pinterest. And you can find um, an episode thread in the This Old Knit podcast group. So come and join us, because Mom, is it okay if you put your kitty red? Yep. The stripes? We put all of our cow information and chatter and everything over there. So I have made some notes of just a few things that I wanted to mention. So I'm going to grab those behind me for this week. So um, first off, I wanted to mention our Stash Miss Cal. So that's still going on. And it will go on through the end of the year, so through December. And we will have um, several prizes for that. I'll at least do one pattern prize, a download from Ravelry. Um, I have a bag from the <coughs> wonderful and generous Sarah of the Love Talk Wool podcast that I will put into the prize package bucket. And um, we will see what else we get from that as well. So um, that is just to remind everyone, knit anything from your stash. And it doesn't have to be all completely made out of stash. So if you make like a three color shawl, for example, and only one of the yarns is from stash, that's totally fine. It's just about motivating you to use your stash and to make things. And it doesn't have to be presents for other people. It can be presents for yourself. That's fine as well. And you're welcome to double, triple, but quadruple you can make it if you want. dip um, with other cows. But yes, you can but, make it be a, a gift if you want it to be. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want it to be a gift, don't do it. That's fine. Yeah, keep it for yourself. That's okay too. Uh, and if you want to pretend that you're making a gift for yourself, then that's okay. Yeah. It's nice to do things for yourself. That's nice. Okay. So that is um, reminder number one. Uh huh. Yep. I do know that song. <laughs> it has a couple other things. It does. So the other thing that I wanted to mention. Hi. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Stop. Hi. Um, thank you for saying hi, Megan. Is, um, I've been sick for a couple weeks, so I might have some coughing going on. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is that the very generous Mina Phillip from the Knitting Expat podcast had asked me to test knit two of her new hat patterns, and she actually offered up a set of those patterns to give away on the podcast. So I will make a um, prompt and I will draw two winners. So in the prompt, just let me know which of the hats that you would like to win if you were the winner. And um, then I will draw for um, two winners before I record the next episode, which will hopefully be back on the two week podcast schedule. But like I said, we've been ill. Um, I have been and Megan has been as well. So just to remind I'm you, the first one is the lightning strike hat. So it is for super bulky yarn and um, it's a very quick knit. So this is the one that I knit and I knit mine out of uh, line brand Woolies Thick and Quick. And it was a very, very fast project. So it's, I think, a very nice product and it's a quick knit. So perfect for Christmas knitting or gift knitting in general or charity knitting. And then the other one is the um, Open Skies hat. So I will also talk about this in the um, FO section. But here's the one of those that I knit. So it has a cable up one side. And um, I knit mine out of, um, shoot, I'm not going to have the tag for this either. It's out of a yarn that I received from a viewer. And um, it was DK weight. It's a fiber hound yarn. 
DK weight, and I think the colorway, this colorway is Hush Puppy. And then this is the other Hush one that puppy. I got of that. And Can so I, I think I might puppy? make some matching Which mittens. Hush puppy? This one's Hush Puppy. Ooh, the one I knit my hat out of. Yeah, so I think I might make some matching mittens with I this think one. That would hush our puppy. It would hush our puppy. Well, um, so anyway, if you would like to win the uh, Open Skies hat or the Lightning Strike hat, please um, comment in the thread once I open it. So thank you, Mina, for that giveaway. I would like to win it. You would like to win it? Well, I already have the pattern, so I can just make you one. I don't need to win it. <laughs> And then um, the last thing that I wanted to mention is that I have been enjoying watching a new podcast. It's called the Anna Knitter Podcast, and it is by a lovely viewer of this podcast, Anna Lena Knitter. Um, she is, I think, four episodes in, so please go check out her podcast because it's she's very sweet and fun and um, I enjoy it a lot. So I hope she keeps podcasting and I just wanted to give her a shout out on the podcast. So that is everything that I kind of made notes about that I wanted to mention. So since I already showed it, I will go ahead and Mom, what start about my picture? with FOs. Um, you can show them when, whenever you're done. Don't rush. I've got a lot of stuff to show because oh, it's been a while. Oh, you're all done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to show Megwood's picture first. No, nope, I'll show you. Okay. I said me. Here's over. my blue kitty. Here's Nina's blue kitty, which I made the red stripes. Here's mm -hmm. my blue kitty with my red stripes. Here's my red kitty with purple polka dots and yellow stripes. And you're going to block it, made the sweetie. Doll. Stay she to the side the of it. The ears. The I colored the nose. She colored the eyes and the eyebrows. I colored the heart and the heart. She made the tail. Except for a few stripes. So I, had I think you did the stripes and I did the blue on the tail. No, you did a couple stripes. Just two. Yeah, but you did and, the green. And I did the flowers. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Since my name is Megwin. Moving on to my finished object, I have one finished object this week. So, um, as I said, Mina asked me to test knit her two hat patterns. So I test knit um, both of them and I was able to finish them in the time frame. They were both very quick knits. So this one I knit um, probably in like two days maybe. Um, so it is the Open Skies hat, and I did not even use a full skein of yarn, so I think these skeins of yarn are like 230 yards, um, 231 yards. The content is 50% superwash reno, 50% silk. It calls for a DK weight. I think the pattern called for like 200 and... 40 yards, so I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough, but I actually had quite a bit left over. So I gave Mina that feedback that if somebody had a smaller skein, they definitely could go ahead and make the hat with it. So it has a folded brim, um, so it's nice and warm on your ears. And then um, this cable is quite simple, so if it was your first cabled pattern, this would be totally fine to do for a first cabled pattern. The top makes this nice star shape, and I really like that she incorporated decreasing the cable into the decreases on the top of the hat, so it looks really nice. It has very, very little slouch. You actually could knit it without any slouch, so I'll go ahead and put it on so you can see. Um, and I have not blocked this at all, so I could block it with more slouch, but you can see it just has a little bit of slouch, but not too bad. And it's super warm, especially around the ears. I love that this covers my ears completely. So I really am going to enjoy wearing this hat for um, the colder months. And it'll be really nice for camping, too. 
So yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love that I used the skein of yarn from my stash, so this counts towards Stashmas, not that I can win any prizes, but I'm actually trying to knit things out of my stash and enjoy them instead of just having them sit around as skeins. So, um, yeah, that's my finished object. And then, um, as far as things I've been working on, oh wait, I do have another finished object. The other finished object is not <coughs> knitting, it's actually sewing. So I finally um, went ahead and used the Hue Loco tutorial from um, the Hue Loco podcast. She put out a tutorial, I think, last Christmas on how to make a holiday bag. So I used that as the basis Mom, to create I this bag. Can I, show them, can I show them it now? Can I finish showing the bag? And then, yes, you can. So, um, what I did is I interfaced all the different pieces. Um, I used a fat quarter that I got from Tuesday morning and then another fat quarter, and then the inside I lined with this candy cane fabric. I used a candy cane lining, and then I thought it would look nice with kind of a green zipper to match the snowman parts, and then to pull it all together. So um, I'm gonna send this to my uh, Advent Swap partner, so I'm getting close to being done with all the stuff I wanted to make for that um, Advent Swap package. I have to just uh, finish my tiny turkey parts. I cut out pieces to make myself a bag, so I'm going to make a fall bag. So this will be the lining, and then, um, and I've shown these pieces, or I've shown these fabrics on the podcast before, but I haven't shown them cut. And then this will be the, oops, the bag itself, and then I'm going to put a brown zipper in it. So I have those all ready to go. I just have to take the time to sit down and sew them together. Um, so things I learned in that um, sewing project, I did some top stitching and I hadn't ever done kind of decorative top stitching before. So I think that really was a nice element with the bag. And um, um, does this state vote for Clinton? I don't know what that state is, I'm sorry. Part of it does. All right, sweetie, I need to finish this, okay? So, those blue spots do? No, that's not how it's colored. Ew. We'll have to look at it later, okay? We can look at it later with my phone. But then, stuff that I've worked on over the last three weeks. I've worked a little bit on my penny candy tea. Not a lot. Um, I think I just picked it up while I was on a conference call maybe because I was listening to it and I had my phone on speaker so I just worked a little bit on it. Still love it but it's progressing very slowly just because I'm kind of filling in with it between other stuff and I really wanted to get all of my Advent stuff done and my um, Coffee with CC Cal stuff a little bit further along before I started working on this because I don't have that much longer to get that um, done. So that leads me into my next thing I've worked on. So I have knit some on the second sock of the strawberries and cream frappe socks and I think I had one of these done the last time I podcast but I'm not positive. So this is the first sock for those who don't remember or didn't watch the last episode. I'm knitting these out of um, Homespun House yarn in the Pygmy Puff colorway. I believe this is the Olsen base. It's the BFL base. And I don't know if she still carries this base or not, but it is really nice. I like the yarn a lot. It's very soft. So I did start the second one. So here's what I've got done on that so far. So hopefully I don't have a ton left till I can 
start the heel. I'm about halfway to the heel flap. So the second one is, is progressing more quickly than the first one was. And these socks are taking a long time. So they're kind of reminding me why I trended away from knitting heavily patterned socks. Just because they take me a really long time to do. So I tend to lose interest um, going into the second sock. But I will finish these, obviously. I'm trying to finish yeah. the cow. They so here's what I've got left of the yarn. They don't just magically never become, never become finished. Yeah, it's a, they're just not as fun to knit as self-striping socks. It's just yeah, and it takes a quickly. while to knit socks. <coughs> so, it does take a while to knit socks. So if your socks are, I'm getting ready, are knitted for a couple of days, don't think, oh, I'll never finish them. Just know that it takes you a lot of days to finish to finish project with knitting you gotta be patient All right. yeah and if you're not a patient person you cannot knit that's true okay so the thing i've worked the most on is my coffee date shawl which is also from the coffee with cc book um and i am basically at the point where i think i'm gonna bind off because I'm kind of over it. Um, it's really huge, so I think it'll be big enough. And even unblocked, like this is a 60 inch cable that I have it on, and I can't even stretch it all the way out. So it's huge, unblocked. And if I did do more on it, I was only planning on doing the rest of another of these sections and then I was gonna finish with the cream but I am you know just starting a brown section again and it's so huge it's so many stitches on the needles I'm just not enjoying knitting it anymore and I don't want to knit stuff Mom, that I don't the place enjoy called Eagles live is pretty close to us oh See, it's right we're right here, and we yeah. just have to drive that far to go to there. Okay. okay. The three colors I'm using are, this one is Coffee, Coffee, Coffee. In coffee, Coffee, Coffee. No Makers. All the, the words are just coffee. This one is Peridot from Knitting Notions, and this one is Popcorn. Popcorn, yummy! From um, Spud and Chloe. Really? I can eat that? It's popcorn? No, it's the, just the color of popcorn. And this one, I finished an entire skein, and I dipped into the second skein. So this is how much I have left of the second skein. So I definitely used a full skein of the cream finished. color. Um, this is about how much I have left of the green. And then I think I have the most left of the coffee yarn, but I also didn't finish the last section of that. So, I'm kind of letting it stew for a little bit and deciding what I want to do if I want to just take a break for a week and then maybe I'll feel like finishing that brown section. I don't know yet. But it's close if it isn't done yet. And it's really big and I'm not sure how I'm going to wear it. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I guess. That part of Ohio is... It's not too far away from Ohio. That's the thing that I'm worried about, is um, how am I going to wear it if I... What's that part of Ohio called? That's not Ohio, that's Maine. Maine? That's Maine. It's a totally different state. Can we drive there sometime? Maybe. Um, so maybe like that? It only I don't know. So I'll have to look at how other people are wearing their coffee hey, Mom, shawls. This? And it also, obviously, will be totally different Mom, once it's been this? blocked. So then... Um, another thing I'm knitting is, like I said, the tiny turkey toys. So I don't have the body of that up here with me. Um, our food is actually ready, so I'll have to go downstairs. So when I come back up, I will bring up the rest of his body. Here's his teeny tiny little head, though. And I have to still knit wings, what is that? feathers, and feet. This is the head of my turkey toy You're that I'm making. Turkey toy? Yes. Can I play with it? I'm making it for my swap partner. But I have the bigger one that's well, downstairs that you can play with. 
Well, can I play with it for a while? Until I don't want you to lose this little head. It's going to be really hard to keep track of. Well, it looks like a balloon head. Okay, and then the last thing that I've been working on is the um, Exploration Station Shawl by Stephen West. So this one is for a knit along that Kristen is hosting and I'm so sorry the last podcast I think I said in the Volan Vine Yarns podcast that is the name of her yarn brand that is not the name of her podcast it's the Yarngasm podcast so I apologize Kristen for saying your podcast name wrong <laughs> but this is my exploration station so I'm using um, four different colors because it's a four color shawl so the gray is a Madeline Tosh, Tosh sock in steamer trunk gray, which I think is a colorway they don't make anymore. This one is Shibui sock, and it's just a number. This one is Monarch in Hedgehog Fibers, and this one is Urchin Hedgehog Fibers. So I believe that this white stripe is going to be my last wedge. And then I'm working the brioche section. So the first um, pattern section that's after the wedges is going to be um, these two colors together. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they play together. And then the next section will be these two colors together. And I think it's a slip stitch panel. And then the last piece is um, like a uh, eyelets chevrons um, and that will be in the gray so I'm already planning a second exploration station because I'd like to do one in more muted colors um, Kristen did hers in some really pretty muted colors and it's gorgeous and I would love to have one kind of more like that so these are very dramatic high contrast colors which I think will be really nice I wear a lot of this kind of pumpkin rust color I have a couple of sweaters that are that color so it will look very nice with those in the fall and winter but um, I would like one that would go with kind of the rest of my wardrobe so and I apologize I'm saying kind of a lot today I'm out of practice for doing podcast and um, my throat hurts so I'm filling in the time um, so that's going really well. I just need to watch the tutorial on how to knit brioche because I've never knit brioche before. So I will be learning something new, which is exciting. I like learning new things. And I still have a ton of all of these yarns. So it will be interesting to see how much I end up with left over. I might do some kind of a hat maybe to match or some scrappy socks or something there's the there's what the shawl looks like if you've never seen the exploration station shawl and it's fun it's a very fun pattern so i highly recommend it if you're looking to knit something kind of different and new then do it. And then um, I will just power through because then I can <coughs> edit this episode and maybe get it up tonight. I have acquired some yarn. I have two more skeins of yarn that I don't have with me because um, they were kind of combined purchases with friends. But um, I ordered my first yarn from the Yarn at Home Mom. And these were two that I had had in my Etsy shopping cart for ever. And when Cordova died, I did some pity shopping. I bought some yarn to make myself feel better. And I'm not sorry because it's beautiful. So thank you for this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. So the first one I got is Candy Cane Coffee. And these are both Gilmore Girls inspired yarns. So there's an episode where Lorelai goes to um, like the local bakery and I guess they have candy cane coffee. <coughs> but it's past the time because um, Rory was somewhere else for Christmas. 
so the, she's begging them to just go in the back and see if they have more candy cane coffee, and they don't ever get their candy cane coffee. But, um, this is the imagined colors of candy cane coffee. So I had a brilliant thought about what to do with this. I want to make socks. This is the basic fingering. It is um, 7525 merino nylon, 463 yards. And I was thinking I would make monkey socks with it for like the monkey monkey underpants. So it's going to be candy cane coffee, monkey monkey underpants socks. And I've never made monkey socks before, so I'm excited to knit those. And then the second one I got is um, on her shimmer sock, which is a very subtle Stellina sock base. It's 75 merino, 20 nylon, 5% Stellina. So it's a very, very soft, kind of shimmery silver. And this is called In Omnia Paratus. So I think this is supposed to be the colors of Rory's dress. She has like a blue dress with a green scarf. So there's this shot of olive green through it. And then it, I love the speckles and it's just super pretty. So this might be part of a shawl or I might make a um, sock head hat with it because I think it'd be really pretty as a sock head hat. So those are my two yarns from the Yarn at Home Mom. And then um, Kristen had sent me a mini skein of Jinx yarns in the gingerbread house colorway and it's self striping but it has a stripe of the brown, a stripe of cream, and then a speckle stripe. And it was so pretty that I had to have a little skein of it. So I happened to see that Jinx yarns was having an update because I started following her on Instagram and I snagged a skein of it in her glitz sock. So again, this is a sparkle base and I'm going to make socks out of this obviously for the um, 12 socks of Christmas cow that Sarah's going to have in the love sock wool group. And I think that starts November 1st. So I'm going to knit up all the Christmas socks. I'm going to knit this one and knit my two from the cozy knitter. Um, I want to knit the, um, this yarn from no makers. This is actually a Valentine's Day colorway called Lovey Dovey, but I think it looks kind of like peppermint stick. So I'm going to knit it in the, there's a peppermint stick socks pattern that's like little candy cane eyelets. So I'm going to knit this in that sock pattern. And then, um, I think I have one more sock yarn that I'm going to knit um, Christmas socks out of. So I will have all the Christmas socks. Oh, it's my peppermint mocha socks. This one. So I will knit lots of Christmas socks for Sarah's cow. So as soon as I finish my Advent swap pack. Okay, everybody. My battery died yesterday, so it's a different day. And I wanted to um, finish up talking about stuff. So I think I was talking about my acquisitions. And I had showed all the yarn that I bought. So um, I just wanted to talk about patterns that I bought. So I bought um, a couple of things when Mina was having her birthday sale. So she had her birthday and she had 30% off um, all of the patterns in her store. So I bought the Beyond Vanilla Socks collections, both of them, and then I also bought the Budding Bluebells shawl pattern, so it's this one, um, because I really like my Across the Pond shawl, and this is the other one of hers that I've been wanting to make, so it's a similar kind of shape, it's the crescent shape, but the lace along the bottom is kind of like leaves, and then this is supposed to be like bluebell flowers, so I have a no Makers Doppelganger that I want to use for this. Um, it is the Gnome on the Range colorway. So it's this one. Which reminds me of a sunset. It's very pretty. It's got purple, blue, green, some cream, this coral color, and gold. And then the contrast color is the coral. 
So this will be the edging and this will be the main body of the shawl. So that may be the next thing on my needles is this one uh, when I finish the coffee date shawl because I always like to have a couple of shawls on the needles and um, Mina's shawl patterns are very well written so and they're a lot of fun in it. So yeah I think that'll be fun and that will look really pretty with just a white t-shirt or like a white t-shirt and blue jeans or um, some of my dress clothes will go very nicely with this as well. So that is that and then um, I plan to buy the um, three Gilmore Girls mini skein sets from the Yarn at Home Mom this weekend so she's going to have an update where she's going to put those in her shop for the last time so I'm going to try to catch that update and potentially buy those and then um, No Makers just released what her Christmas colors are going to be and she also came up with a colorway called Chai Chai and I really really want the Chai Chai because it's like very pretty neutrals and I think it would be um, really pretty part of a shawl because um, it would go well with almost anything. <coughs> Excuse me, I still have this cough. Um, the other thing that I'd like to cast on to my needles is um, the Luella top, and I don't think I've shown that pattern on the podcast before, but it's essentially a round yoke sweater with just a lace pattern up at the top on the yoke and then just plain body and it's in fingering weight yarn so I was going to rip out this that I had started so I think this is like the Wonderland top by maybe the Alice in Wonderland tee by Justine Lorkowska but I just um not feeling it. So I got this top part done, but I think I'm going to rip it out and reuse this yarn. So this is Knit Picks Gloss Fingering Weight in the Pumpkin Colorway, which is a discontinued color. I believe I have enough to do the sweater, but the weird thing is it calls for a lot of yards, and I'm not sure that the yardage is right on it for the sizes. It seems really, really high. It calls for like 1,500 yards for my size for just a three-quarter sleeve um, sweater, and that seems like a lot. So I wonder if it's something where they built in a lot of extra to make sure you wouldn't run out. Um, but very few people have knit it, so I can't really ask people that have knit it before. So I may just do it, and if I don't have enough to do long sleeves, I think it would also be really cute with cap sleeves. That's totally fine with me, so I do have that as a possibility. So this is, I think, two skeins of the yarn. And then I have um, four more in this bag, and then I have one more... I'm kicking around somewhere else because I had started a pair of fingerless mitts out of it and then ripped them out. So I have um, eight total skeins, so I think I have plenty to make um, a sweater for me. And I would love to make that for fall. So I think that will be next up on my needles. I just need to swatch for it and see what needle size that I need to use. So watch for that. And then um, I believe that I've mentioned everything I wanted to mention. Oh, no, I got a gift pattern as well from Yonder Woman, the Riley Rose shawl. And she showed it off in her last podcast episode. She finished one in really pretty red and black and white. Um, and it's three colors, I believe, and it's kind of different pattern panels. And then you knit it side to side, which will be really nice. Um, it's never going to be too long of rows, um, like when you knit from a starting point and get, and get really big. So it'll be um, sideways. So I think that'll be a fun one to knit, and maybe I'll start being on the lookout for what colors I might like to knit that in. I'm thinking maybe a couple of my full and vine colors might be really good and fun to do together. 
I have a couple of nice purples. Like I have Poe, Moondrop, and then um, the Club Colorway, the Evil Queen one that's uh, sparkly. I think those would be really pretty together. So maybe I'll look at that as well. But I think um, the Budding Bluebell shawl will be my next shawl that I'll knit. And I'd like to get at least one sweater on the needles. I also would like to start the kids' sweaters. Because I try to knit them each a sweater every year so that they have it to wear for <coughs> holiday pictures. And that they have a warm sweater that I can put on over stuff. So for Megwin, I'm going to knit the um, Bloomsbury Kids. And I got this pattern from the lovely Coddington. She gave this one to me as a gift. And then for Joshua, I'm going to knit something out of the No Makers Gnome Some Dove Tweed. But I don't know which pattern I'm going to use. I'm thinking either the Flax Light or, um, I forget what it's called. It's like the Fingering Weight Pullover or something by Hannah Fettig. It's a really basic pullover sweater with just a big open yoke. And I have that pattern as well. So... One of those, just a very plain sweater um, to make the tweed yarn shine. So that is what I have planned. And I am going to go ahead and um, end the podcast now so that I can get it edited and up because I know it's been several weeks and I want to get a podcast episode out for you. So Megwin has asked to record a segment, so I'm going to stop and then I'll record her segment because she wants to talk about the Electoral College and how it works. And um, yeah, I'm sure you all want to know how the Electoral College works, right? So the Electoral College by a six-year-old. All right, guys, have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, Look at the before, before I show anything, I want to talk about the Electoral College. Okay. Now, everyone watching my video who doesn't know anything about that, which... I know a lot of people don't, but some people do. Mm-hmm. What's the Electoral College again? <laughs> <laughs> it's how we vote for the president. So if we vote, oh, but you then mean like the that blue, each, red and blue map? Right, and then each state has a certain amount of votes that they have electoral votes. So remember, even the big states don't necessarily have very many votes because there aren't a lot of people that live there. Oh. You remember that? That's what the electoral college is. Do you remember that? So a state that has a lot of people, they have a lot of votes. Yeah. A state that has a little people, they get a little votes. Uh-huh. That's the electoral college? Yes. I want to talk to them about something else, too. Okay. Well, everyone, before I start showing things, I would like to talk about the Electoral College and other things about the president before I start showing the things I have today. Hey, nice spinning, Mom. Thanks. Okay. Uh, well, the Electoral College is... A state that has a lot of people gets a lot of votes for president and a lot of votes for another president. And a state that has a little people only gets a little votes for a president. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how many total votes that there are? Uh, well, in California, there are a bunch of votes. In other states, in a couple other states... There are a little bit of votes. Mm -hmm. There's 538 total electoral votes. What? There's 538 total electoral votes. There are 538 total electoral votes. Now, next thing. There's like this map. And the states that are blue or light blue... Vote for Clinton a little 
blue for the light blue or a lot for the big blue. Like California is a big a fan of Clinton. Let me show you. So this is my California from my puzzle. So this piece of California is really into Clinton. Clinton shows blue shows up the whole bar of it when we rolled our mouse over it, which means that there are tons of votes for Clinton there. Which the blue is Clinton. The red is Trump. Give us an email that you don't like Clinton. If you do like Clinton and you hate Donald Trump, then give us an email that says that you like Donald Trump. That you, I was about to say Donald Trump, that you like Clinton. Sorry guys that I said if you like Donald Trump for that sentence. I'm so sorry. And if you kind of like both of them and you can't decide which president, so you just can't vote, email on that. And please, please give, give us... You know how when Nina emails most of you that watch her podcast, then you you get love Nina? Well, I want you to say love, then your name, so I know who sent the message. Now, if you like Clinton, then also say which state you're from. Bro. And tell me if a lot of people in your state like Clinton, or a lot of people, or a lot of people in your state like Trump. If you don't know, just ask, just ask all the people you know, and and know, and ask those people to ask all the people they know, and it just goes on and on and on that way. And then tell me which state you're from. And then tell me if it almost, if, if all of it's VAR, if, if a lot of it is Clinton or a lot of it is Trump. And, oh, what state is this again? What state? Texas? the California piece, but I do have this piece. Texas, <coughs> sorry, I had it upside down. Texas is a big fan of Trump. Now, if you like Trump, email us, say, say what state you're from, and, and say love, put your name, say what state you're from, and say if you're if your state votes almost for Clinton or almost for Trump. And, and also say that, that I am serious at the end, so I really know you're telling the truth of each one. Huh, am I on Ravelry, Ravelry actually? And, and say it to Nina. All of you that watch her podcast and all of you that watch my podcast. Some people might not even care because they don't live in the United States at all. So they probably don't care one way or the other. I'd like to show you is that when I did the most I ready reading tests at school, I ready reading is when you learn to read on I ready. I got this because I got the most lessons because they did and I have this big peg with Baba and this little polar bear and this little penguin baby and you can see I have this nice clean canteen and my mommy gave me her tattoo for my tattoo Ta now that is Pretty much almost all I have to show you. Now, Mommy is going to send both of these ornaments to two people. This this one is going to be to one person. This one is going to be to another person. No, I'm keeping the angler fish. 
This one is going to be to one person, and she's going to keep the anglerfish. Because yep. they look really cute. Look at him. He's so cute. Oh, oh. Real anglerfish. Use these little bags to attract fish because it's glowing, and in the deep dark, it's easier to see. But when they get too close, the fish swims <coughs> up and grabs it with his mouth. It's so clever that when when he opens his mouth, the fish are able to get in, but when he closes it, they're not able to get out. Bye! Bye, everybody! Bye! Bye. I'll do it.